Welcome back to TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG. You know, we get a lot of questions on hand versus foot amp trolls. So we're going to show you the difference between the two. But before we do, I want to talk about scratch starting. That's something that's rarely talked about, and a lot of machines absolutely don't have the controls on them to do anything else but scratch start. Now, in a scratch start mode, all you have available is the tungsten and typically it's live. So you manually have to turn on your gas. Once you turn your gas on, you have your machine set. Then you go into a scratch mode. And, and it's exactly like that. If you're stick welding, you've done this before. But you scratch and the arc will initiate. When you finish welding, you pull away. Not necessarily a great way to go, but it does get the job done. Now, you've seen in several of our videos that we talk about holding the torch in the right position at the right angle. And, and you can see this takes hand motion control, holding it like a pencil. But one of the other issues that's involved is adding the filler material. So you've got this hand involved, you've got this hand involved, and you wanna make sure that the head of this torch isn't bouncing up and down because that's your voltage. And if your voltage gets too close, for instance, if you're welding at 12 volts and you get too close, it goes from 11 to 10 to nine, when it goes to zero, that means that you've dipped the tungsten into the puddle, and you don't want that to happen. So we're going to show you how to make sure that that doesn't happen. But again, getting back to this hand, your torch hand, you're holding it in position, you're holding your voltage, you're dabbing, you're dabbing, you're dabbing. Now, at the same time, we have over here a foot control. <clears throat> now, you don't see that in a lot of the videos, but what I'm doing is I'm pushing this foot control and I'm increasing the amperage with my foot until I get a puddle. Now once I get a puddle, I stabilize. I may have to back off a little, may have to increase a little, but in any case, when I'm doing that, it never affects my hand. Okay, so I highly recommend the foot control anytime possible, but that does beg the question, when do you use something else? When do you go to a hand amp troll? Now I happen to have a couple of hand amp trolls here with me, and I'll go through them with you, and, and you can pick out the one that's preferred for your application. So take a look at this one. This one's a rotary, or sometimes we call it a racetrack, <clears throat> and it'll Velcro onto just about any size torch. And yes, you can adjust it. Uh, I happen to be left-handed, but you can adjust it, and it works either way you want to adjust it. I see some people actually put this on the side. I've got another one here. I call it the thumb wheel because it just has a, it's a rotary very much the same, but it's a smaller rotary. And you can see that it has pretty good action to it. So you can increase your amperage, decrease your amperage, and there's not too much motion control uh, of an issue, but there still is a little bit. So the more sensitive your project gets, the tighter you have to have your arc, the more difficult this is to use. I've got a third one, and this one is linear. And when I say linear, it slides up and down. And it really does become a personal preference which one you like. So you can use, you can use your fingers, you can hold it like this. In some of the industries where you're doing pipeline, walking the cup, this becomes a real popular one. But again, there's motion control, an added feature on your hand. And so we're trying to avoid that as much as possible. So you have the options, pick the one that you want. These Velcro again to just about any size torch. Thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.